Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Ipshita. In the news and media, we are hearing a lot about mycomycosis or as commonly mentioned as the black fungus. It has almost raised a panic. Well, being aware is important, but panic really doesn't help. So let's learn a bit more about the disease so that we can be aware and we know when we need to contact our doctor and when to raise an alarm. So what is mycomycosis? Mycomycosis is a fungal infection. Is it new? No, it has been there even before. Then why suddenly so much is being talked about it? Because suddenly there is a rise in the number of people presenting with mucomycosis. Now the next question comes, why is that so? Well, we have to understand that mucomycosis is a disease which affects immunosuppressed people or immunocompromised people. Usually, we used to see this in people with uncontrolled diabetics or people who are on cancer treatment or who are receiving immunosuppressants for either organ transplantations or any other disease. Right now, in the setting of ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, the COVID infection itself manages to suppress the immunity of people and the treatment that it demands, like the use of uh, steroids and drugs like tocilizumab, also suppresses the immunity of people. Along with that, it is being more commonly seen in people who have been on prolonged ventilation support and received oxygen for a long time. So that is why those cases are rising and that has raised an alarm. So now, we need to be aware of what are the symptoms it presents with so that we can contact our doctor at the right time. We have to understand that as of we are speaking, mucomycosis is present in the environment and it enters our body, the spores enter through inhalation or as we breathe. So first it affects the nose. What are the symptoms? It can present with nasal discharge, nasal stuffiness that is a blocked nose. The discharge can have blood or black spots on it. There can be black spots even on your skin which are known as eschars and there can be a bad odour. From the nose, it spreads to the paranasal sinuses. Once it invades the paranasal sinuses, it can have swelling, pain or even present with numbness. Once again, it can have eschars. From both the nose and the paranasal sinuses, it can invade the eye. Initially, at the beginning phase of invading the eye, there is only redness or congestion. There can be chemosis or swelling of the conjunctiva. As it progresses and the disease aggravates, there can be swelling of the whole area around the eye. There can be a protrusion of the eyeball itself, which is known as proptosis. Or the eye can in fact look smaller, which is because of the drooping of the eyelid and the eye appears to be smaller. As the disease progresses behind the eyeball, and it can cause other symptoms like restriction of the movement of the eyeball and it can cause double vision as we call as diplopia. Once it invades the arteries like the central retinal artery and the ophthalmic artery, it can actually cause a sudden diminution of vision or a sudden loss of vision even. From the eye, it can invade the central nervous system or the brain which presents with symptoms like seizures or unconsciousness. Now these are the symptoms but is this disease treatable? Yes, if detected early and the treatment is started early, even though the treatment is pretty aggressive, it can be treated. So, we need to raise an alarm at the right time. Well, what are the preventive measures we can take to avoid mycomycosis? First of all, if you are diabetic, your diabetes must be under control. Judicious use of drugs like steroids and tocilizumab is important. Please do not self-medicate. Take them only under the advice of your, uh, of your doctor. Do not prolong the duration of these drugs either. Take them only as advised. Other than that, aseptic precautions while administering oxygen supplementation, clean water and humidifiers is important. Personal hygiene remains as one of the most important means. Some people who recover from COVID have this idea that they have immunity now and they do not need to wear their masks. Well, that doesn't hold true. They still need to continue wearing their masks that will help prevent them from inhaling mucomycosis spores too. So most importantly, a high index of suspicion for this disease and an early diagnosis is the way forward in the management of mycomycosis. I hope this video was helpful. If you find this useful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends and family. Thank you.
Stay safe, everyone.